I'm a senior fellow with Lockheed Martin, part of the Advanced Technology Center. And I work on several things, including quantum enhanced remote sensing and communication. That's been a lot of the work I've been doing recently. And a lot of non-traditional imaging, active compressive sensing, and developing new types of optics. You know, if you think about any time you have tools that you're trying to build, you have to have the tools that build the tools that you're going to be building. And so that's what's been happening now over the you know, recent history. So looking forward, a lot of the different tools that we'll need for having these advanced communication systems or even a lot of the manufacturing systems that you would need, having those capabilities, it will start to accelerate now that you have a lot of those and they'll be space-based. For communication, there's been a big push for the past few decades to try and incorporate quantum into that because that's the way you can have true security where it's undeniably secure, verifiably secure. And so making that practical so you can implement that is going to be a significant impact. It's, it's one of the few ways that you can get the sensitivity that you need and have it be fundamentally secure for your transmission. It gives you more bandwidth for less energy. So usually the energy and bandwidth are what scale together, but being able to get those high bandwidths with much less energy is what makes it so important and why there's been a big interest in it. Fundamental limit of what you're able to achieve if you're trying to do communication, all of the information is conveyed by photons. And so it's going to make it more secure because we can now practically implement not completely non-classical sources. So it's not just that you can take a laser and encode your information. Be able to make these bright sources that can give you very non-classical light, purely quantum effects now at the scales that we need for long-range communication. It's completely unprecedented. Be able to have energetically efficient communication channels that have high bandwidth that's where this technology will apply as well, as well as looking at things like um, you want to have security when you're doing your banking. Those are the types of things to look at. How can we take the, all of these capabilities and shrink them down so that the consumer can use them and make them practical as well? I've been interested in in science really since I was a kid. And so what's exciting for me is to see that a lot of the things that were just purely theoretical, even back then, you know, about two decades ago, are now practical where the hardware actually exists in order to make these things work. So, so that's what makes it very rewarding for me, looking at things like super additivity, that while it was a nice theoretical concept for what you could do, now we can actually practically implement it and, and do tests with those. And that's what we're doing, working on right now with our field demos. I'm just excited to look forward to what other people will be able to work with now as we do these demonstrations, what that will enable in the future as you start bringing those multifunction systems together. If you're not interested in quantum, you need to be because that future is happening now. The tough thing is gonna be that as everyone gets more specialized, how do they know enough to be able to design those next, next generation systems? And that's always difficult anytime there's been these new changes in technology. For me, it's a very exciting time in this field and it's very rewarding to see all of the things that I've been working on for many years start to become practical. And so that's one of my big goals is to, to see something deployed and get used in a long range sensing system.